It's hard to believe that as recently as 15 years ago, few people around here even knew what a green building was. Yet thanks to prodding by local foundations, a newly formed Green Building Alliance, and an early convert in PNC Bank, our region got in on the ground floor of what's become a national industry. Today, Phipps Conservatory didn't even have to leave the region to find the architects, engineers, scientists, and technologies and materials to build one of the greenest buildings in the world. It found them all in our region or somewhere else in Pennsylvania. Georgia Berner is president and CEO of Berner International Corporation, and Tom Joseph is president and CTO of Epiphany Solar Water Systems. And welcome, good to see both of you. Thanks for coming by. Congratulations, Thank you. by the way. This is an exciting project. It is, very exciting. Yeah, well, why don't we talk a little bit about what your companies do and then your contributions to the, uh, the Center for Sustainable Landscapes. Georgia, you're, you're the HVAC person, right? <laughs> I am, and we're, we're actually not in the HVAC business like Lennox or whatever. This is a very special unit, specially designed for FIPS. It has three ways of controlling the temperature within the building and the amount of fresh air. We bring the air in initially through an enthalpy, which is a heat recovery wheel. And as the wheel rotates, it takes humidity and temperature out of the air. Uh, the outside air coming in in the winter, for example, is cold. We use the exhaust air from the building to heat it and humidify it. In the summertime, we're bringing in hot, humid air. We use the exhaust air to dehumidify it and uh, lower the temperature. We then have a system called the tricoil, which is three coils for pre-cooling, dehumidification, and reheating. And then it goes into geothermal wells that are here. That's where we dump the waste heat. That's the, where we get extra heat when we need it. And in between each one of these functions, we have temperature control dampers, really, to keep the air moving and keep it the right temperature for the building. Wow, sounds like it was really customized for this particular building and the types of technologies that have been implemented. It was, and it's, it's very innovative. Some of it is, uh, is really new technology. From Epiphany's standpoint, what's your contribution? Well, our company's core technology is a uh, water purification device that uh, can purify essentially any type of water, including ocean water, uh, river water, well water, even sewage water. And, uh, and it's completely solar powered. Uh, we use concentrated solar energy. So in other words, we just take sunlight and focus it with a reflective dish back to a focal point, and that's the concentrator. And uh, at the focal point, we then uh, absorb the heat from the sunlight and use that heat to power a distillation unit. Primarily, our business is, is overseas in providing drinking water for people, but uh, we received a call from Phipps Conservatory last year uh, explaining that they, they're building this, uh, this new living building and that uh, they, needed a zero, they needed to meet a, a zero net water requirement. And so uh, the challenge they were facing at the time was that they can uh, take the sewage water out of the building and run it through active wetlands and uh, sand filters and everything else and eliminate most of the, the solids and most of the waste in that water. But there's still a little bit of residual water that, that they just can't get everything out of it. And they can't discharge that water back to, the, back to the ground. Although it's clean enough, it would violate the living building challenge. So uh, the way this will work is they will pump that water back up to our system on top of their greenhouse. Uh, our, our dishes will be mounted on top of the greenhouse. They will provide the heat to power the distillation unit that will distill that water and turn it into 100% pure distilled water. And then that distilled water will be fed to the orchids uh, in their greenhouse and it goes right back into the building and, and it's a zero net system. Okay, so it preserves the self-contained aspect of the system. Now, is this the first time you've really done an application like this? This is a unique application for us. Uh, uh, you know, uh, our, our primary purpose is to build small modular systems that can be placed uh, anywhere in the world uh, at a moment's notice to provide emergency drinking water or even sustainable uh, drinking water for people in undeveloped parts of the world. Uh, so this system is, is great because it gives us an opportunity to prove that we can, we can do more than just drinking water. And, uh, and the truth is the water that comes out of this system is, even here, is, is uh, far, uh, far exceeds the, the drinking water standards. But rather than go through all the regulatory headaches to, to get it certified, and who wants to drink sewage water, really, if you don't have to? Well, yeah, it's <laughs> hard to it's convince possible. people, no matter how good a job you do, but the orchids don't care. The orchids they'll, they'll don't mind. They, they actually prefer the distilled water. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Just a little bit of time left, but I'm wondering what it means to businesses like yours. George, yours, yours has been around for a while, but to be able to participate in a project like this. This is, uh, it is huge. It's really exciting. I came here as a six-year-old with my mother, who made flower arrangements for Phipps. And so to be part of it, I feel like I'm just cycling through, but also the green building. That's, that is so exciting. And Pittsburgh is in the forefront on that and has been And this. This building is going to be a leader in the world. Tom? 
I say for us, it's just really remarkable to see the, the progress that Phipps has made over the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, and we're, we're just really excited and appreciative to be a part of this project. Uh, it's a big opportunity for us to prove that, that we can do you know, a lot more than just, than just uh, the drinking water side of things. All right, well, congratulations to both of you. Exciting use of technology. Hopefully people get a chance to come out here this summer and check it out and see how it all works. Georgia Burner from Burner International, Tom Joseph from Epiphany uh, Solar Water. Thank you both. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute with a first-hand perspective from some of the first journalists to see the new living building. Stay with us.